Nearly every other motorcycle manufacturer has jumped on the modern retro bandwagon recently and it is easy to see why. These motorcycles evoke a sentiment of nostalgia from a simple past while using the advanced technology that we have today. So with a 650cc platform already in hand and the iconic 1977B1 for visual reference, Kawasaki came up with the Z650 RS. And now that we have ridden a good 500 kilometers, let us tell you everything that you need to know about the motorcycle and if it makes much more sense than the Street Fighter counterpart. Now while Neil will tell you whether this is a better purchase option than the Z650 in the course of this film, the thing that I'm wondering is, is this the best new retro motorcycle that you can buy in the market today for this money? Well, we have an option towards the end of the film, so stick around till the end because maybe there is something better that you might be able to buy. As its name spells out, the Z650 RS borrows its underpinnings from the Z650. But the Z650 aims to be more sharp and stealthy and the RS is quite the opposite with its well-rounded parts. A simplistic design embellished with chrome on the headlamp cowl and the bezels on the twin pod cluster, the Z650 RS will send you right down memory lane. The green shade looks proper old school and the golden multi-spoke alloy wheels themselves look like wire spokes units from your. Kawasaki has also paid attention to adorning the fuel tank with colour-coded pinstriping. However, the only eyesore on the otherwise charming design is the large sari guard and grab rails. Since these can be easily unscrewed, we removed and weighed them. A whole 3.4 kg of ugliness saved there. Looks much cleaner now, doesn't it? Let us know in the comments below. That said, the build quality on the Z650 RS is solid throughout. Be it the plastic bits or the metal components, all of it fits well together and is easy on the eyes. The switch gear is tactile, easy to use and reach as well. Although the round mirrors which add to the style are small and offer a limited view of the vehicles behind. Now thanks to the chunky fuel tank, the Z650 RS does look big from afar. But as you get closer, you'd realize that the motorcycle is compact, much like its Street Fighter sibling. With a curb weight of 192 kilos, the RS is light as well, so moving it around is no sweat. Getting on is easy too. And even with a seat height higher than the Z650, having both your feet on the ground is quite easy, thanks to the tapering profile of the seat. Speaking of which, the seat on the Z650 RS is wide and cushioned well for long rides, but would be a tight fit for the pillion. However, with a tall and wide handlebar that is easy to reach and low foot pegs, the ergos are fairly relaxed, exactly what you'd want from a retro-style street bike. What I also liked about its ergos is the shape of the fuel tank. It might not have knee recesses, but is wide enough and effortless to grab onto. Adding to the Z650's effortless ergos is the plush ride quality. The suspension dampens the impact from broken roads, undulations and smaller bumps quite well. Even bridge joints and larger potholes are ironed out decently. While its design and ergos tell a tale of a relaxed and easy-going motorcycle, the performance that the Z650 offers is quite thrilling. Even as the 649cc engine comes to life, it sings the song of a true blue Kawasaki sports bike rather than the bassy exhaust flutter known for retro motorcycles. So, let's give it a listen. Right from the start, the engine comes across as smooth and refined. But more importantly, it is extremely tractable for a high-capacity motor and can tread along in 6th gear as low as 2200 rpm without any shudder. And when you ring the throttle, the Z650 RS reaches triple digit speeds in no time and with no strain even as the needle hits 10,000 rpm. 
There is a bit of buzz at around 5000 RPM on the handlebars, but that's hardly noticeable. What makes the ride even pleasant is the way the Z650 puts down its 68 bhp. It isn't exactly explosive, but still manages to plaster a smile without threatening to soil your pants. Although as you shift through the slick 6-speed gearbox and manage to cross to 150 km per hour, the lack of wind protection makes it a task to hold on to the Z650 RS. Tone it down a bit and the motorcycle can manage a cruising speed of a good 120 km per hour all day. That said, the Nissan calipers it comes with slows things down at the drop of a hat. Offering incredible feel and sharp bite at both ends, the setup showed no signs of fade even after extensive use. And its somewhat sports bike-like performance also complements its somewhat sports bike-like handling. It might not feel sharp to turn in, but the Z650 is fun around corners. Although the Dunlop Sportmac Road Sport tyres fail to provide enough grip and confidence, keeping the Z650 RS from its full potential. In the city, the Z650 RS feels right at home. It is easily manoeuvrable thanks to its compact size, low curb weight and punchy engine that allows for quick overtakes. When it comes to features, Kawasaki has kept the Z650 RS up to date. It ships with full LED lighting all around and ABS as standard. It also gets a petite, negative LCD between the retro-looking twin pod clusters. This has the gear indicator, fuel gauge, engine temperature gauge and also displays average fuel consumption, fuel range along with the trip meters and odo. But in a bid to keep a balance between new age and retro, it misses out on the Bluetooth connectivity and the color TFT screen that the lesser price Z650 comes with. Although unlike its Street Fighter counterpart that only gets an adjustable brake lever, both of the RSS levers can be adjusted for span. It's a tiny addition but makes things much easier. The Z650 RS returned between 19 to 21 km per litre riding in the city and on the highway. And since it gets a 12 litre tank that is smaller than the Z650's 15 litre unit, you could ride it around for 240 km on a full tank of fuel. That's still decent for a near 70 bhp motorcycle. Priced at 6.72 lakh, the Z650 RS costs a premium of 48,000 over the Z650. And that is a significant amount considering it does not even get the TFT display or the connectivity option. But then, the RS is for someone who wants a properly old-school motorcycle with all the old-school charm, but with all the conveniences of a modern motorcycle. That said, the 650 RS is fast, it's friendly, it's comfortable to ride, and with a tractable engine, it is great to use every day as well. So if the only reason you buy this over the Z650 is the way it looks, then why don't you just buy the Interceptor? I mean, they're both neo retro in terms of styling. But the Z650 gets premium parts, you know, it's, get, it's got better brakes, it's got better tyres, and it also offers much better performance. That I can't argue with. Yes, I rode that motorcycle in terms of suspension, engine performance, everything. I mean, it's a more sophisticated motorcycle. But here's my argument. You can buy this for a little over 3 lakhs. That is over 7 lakh rupees. So it's uh, around half the price. You can spend another two lakhs on this motorcycle. You can have adjustable suspension. You can have nicer, lighter wheels. You can have better tires. You can have better brakes. You can set the ergos to suit your individual riding style, which of course you can't do on that. And still you end up saving money. And that money you can use for fuel and tires, you know, repeatedly and ride more, ride more aggressively. That is just, you're stuck to the factory spec motorcycle. So if I were to choose, I would take the Interceptor and then build it according to my specifications, which is exactly what I've done. Well, if you like the video, do leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. <laughs>